Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to my gear tour. I always find it interesting to see what equipment is used behind some of my favorite videos. So today, I thought I'd offer a little behind the scenes look at some of the stuff I use to create my content. It only makes sense to start with the most important piece of equipment you're going to need, the camera. Now I shoot with the Panasonic GH4, and in my opinion, it's one of the most versatile and feature pack cameras you can buy for under $2,000. This mirrorless Micro Four Thirds Beast offers internal 4K along with a wide range of video-centric settings you simply won't find on most cameras in its price range. Features like focus peaking, zebra stripe overlay, and digital zoom, not to mention the built-in Wi-Fi to shoot and control remotely, makes using the GH4 a pleasure. And with no limit on recording length, plus the ability to shoot in a multitude of video formats and bit rates, the GH4 really is a Swiss army knife of sorts, and should more than satisfy the needs of amateurs and professionals alike. Up next, the lenses. For me, 90% of the time, I'm reaching for my Sigma 18-35. A combination of price, build quality, and super crisp optics make this lens a favorite among YouTubers. Sigma did an amazing job with the design and construction of this lens. You're getting the image quality of a prime and the versatility of a zoom. Granted, the focal length is limited, but it's still super useful for shooting the type of video that I do. You have a maximum fixed aperture of 1.8, which means zooming in and out won't change your f-stop. Its metal construction feels super solid and the rubberized focus and zoom rings have a nice smooth action. If you prefer to use autofocus when shooting, well, the Sigma's got you covered there as well, with an ultrasonic motor that's quick and very quiet. Now, the 18-35 to is only built for crop sensor cameras, so unfortunately this meant my favorite lens wouldn't work with my new GH4 until I grabbed one of these. This is the Metabone Speed Booster Ultra. This little adapter allows you to attach an APS-C size lens to a Micro Four Thirds size mount. And this particular version of the speed booster enables you to regain the in-camera aperture control and autofocus, which didn't work with previous models of the speed booster. Not only does it allow me to use my Canon lenses with the GH4, but it also gives me an extra stop of light and increases my field of view, compensating for the Micro Four Thirds crop, which was my main reason for picking one up. It works amazingly well and saves me from having to go out and buy all new Micro Four Thirds size lenses. Moving on. Although the GH4's 3-inch screen is pretty high res, it's still only 3 inches, which in many cases is just fine, but sometimes a larger display comes in handy. This is the Aperture VS2. It's a 7-inch external monitor with a resolution of 1024 by 600 which doesn't sound all that high, but it's plenty for the purposes of pulling focus. Now we've got a few options when it comes to I.O., both digital and analog, and the unit can be powered via battery or wall adapter. Along the bottom, we have a 3.5mm headphone jack for monitoring your audio, and on the front, buttons for your power, source, and navigation. This particular unit comes with its own set of video editing features like focus peaking, zebra stripes, safe area overlays, and 1 to 1 pixel mapping, which is huge for achieving critical focus. Overall, the VS2 is a budget friendly option that retains much of its more expensive competitors' features and has been a valuable addition to my setup. Up next, the piece of equipment that holds all that expensive gear my tripod. Now don't let the name fool you, the Fancy Air FC270A is an excellent fluid head tripod that offers super smooth performance and at a great price. It weighs in at just under 10 pounds and its thick locking metal legs can extend from 30 to 62 inches. It's got a 75 millimeter bowl and bubble level to tweak the plane and an adjustable expandable 14 inch handle. The dual lock quick release plate makes removing your gear easy and an additional safety lock adds an extra level of security. You've also got an option to mount accessories directly to the tripod on the left or right side. But where the magic really lies is within the fluid head system. This thing is super smooth. Pans and tilts from start to stop are stutterless with little to no kickback. And the counterbalance feature really comes in handy when I'm trying to keep my camera in position from one shot to the next. Now the next piece of equipment is one that's going to be pretty invaluable if you want to add some dimension to your shooting. That's a slider. The one that I'm currently using is the K2 slider from Canova. Now the purpose of any slider is to give the filmmaker a way to create fluid, stable, in-motion shots. And the K2 does a good job of providing just that with its roller bearing system. Fine tuning can be done under the dolly for adjusting the glide, and the rigid metal construction keeps it from flexing while being used in any of the multiple mounting positions. 
Combine it with something like this ball head and you can create some really nice dynamic multi-axis shots. Okay, so the last bit of gear that is going to be essential to shooting video is lighting. And there are a lot of choices out there when it comes to artificial light sources. But most will use either LEDs, incandescent, or fluorescent bulbs. I opted to go with LEDs for both their compact form factor and cool running temperature. What you're looking at here are the Studio Pro S600Ds. Now each panel contains 600 high-powered daylight balanced LEDs. They can be powered by AC adapter or V-Lock external battery, which makes them a lot more portable than some other options. The light output can be regulated via the dial on the back, and the adjustable stands make them easy to tuck away when not in use. Alright, so to close things out here, the very last thing we're going to be taking a look at is the audio equipment I use to create most of my voiceovers. That would be the Rode NT1 microphone and the Focusrite Scarlett Solo audio interface. The NT1 is a very well-made cardioid condenser mic that's known mostly for its low self-noise and is touted as one of the world's quietest microphones. It brings excellent clarity and detail to the mid-range which results in a rich, smooth sound that's perfect for voiceover work. The extremely well-designed shock mount that comes with the NT1 keeps the mic isolated from any outside movement or vibration, and the PSA1 boom arm I have attached makes it very easy to record without ever having to leave my desk. The Scarlett Solo is a small USB audio interface from Focusrite. It's got a built-in preamp for phantom power and a single XLR input as well as a quarter-inch input for added connectivity. You can listen through a pair of connected headphones or through a set of studio monitors by way of the RCA outs on the back. Now Focusrite is well known for its excellent analog to digital conversion, and the Solo is no exception. It captures audio in high quality 24-bit resolution, giving you detailed, super accurate reproduction, and has just enough I.O. to suit my needs. Well guys, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Until next time, I'm Mike, and this was Novatech. Thanks for watching, everybody.